Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, today I will be taking a look at this which is the international re-release of River Song's Future Sonic Screwdriver. And I really, really hope it's much better than the UK re-release from last year, which received quite a reaction from me over its lack of features. Get back here! Yes, so here's hoping this one is much better. Taking a look at the packaging, the box has the same basic shape and layout as its original release, but with some updated graphics and a blue and silver colour scheme. At the top you can see a classic era Doctor Who logo in this silver panel, while on the bottom we get an image of River in her spacesuit garb wielding her Sonic. Beneath this, a panel confirms that this is from the 10th Doctor's era, of course appearing in Silence of the Library and Forest of the Dead, and yes it is River Song's future Sonic screwdriver. A panel at the top states that the toy includes red and blue settings, with an image of the screwdriver demonstrating both modes below it, while a secondary panel reads with lights, sound effects and hidden neural relay indicator panel, and next to that you can see an image of the neural relay itself. The display window in this box is very small, and it suffers from the same issue the packaging for the laser screwdriver does, which is that the emitter is obstructed from view by the Doctor Who logo panel. The back offers the same information as the front, along with some battery instructions and some legal guff. So that's it for the packaging, let's crack on and take a look at the toy itself. Okay, so here we have the future Sonic Screwdriver. And this has to be one of, if not the, best detailed Sonic Screwdrivers that character options have ever produced. And that's mainly because the prop gave them so much to work with. It's a fascinating design and has such an excellent aesthetic look to it. The emitter is ridged and moulded from transparent plastic so the emitter can change colours. But as you can see, you can make out the LED and some circuitry underneath it, which could have been disguised better. The head is gold and includes these four dampers attached to the columns around its edges. It also features some excellent paint apps, as does the rest of the body, with this green haphazardly applied to give the Sonic an oxidised copper effect, which I think works really well. Moving on to the main body of the screwdriver, we get this panel which houses the neural relay, but more on it later. I love the small inclusion of these minute screws around the frame of the panel, which look as though they've been taken straight from the prop, as several other screws have been moulded onto the body of the Sonic in various places to really give it a screen accurate look. The activation button has been given this excellent housing, which is connected to the translucent fluid link, which itself is attached to the golden user identification ring on the lower half. The ring is big enough for a guy like me with really big hands to fit his little finger through comfortably, so I should say that this screwdriver should be suitable for use by most adult cosplayers as well as children. Some additional flourishes of detail around the body of the Sonic all adds to its overall look, including these three green buttons with golden edging, which has been moulded into this indented section. Of course, the body also features this exaggerated crackle design on some dark grey plastic, which gives it this great aged look. Two golden rings with some receded sections round off the bottom of the body, while the long black end cap features some golden panels running around it and a silver tip. So for detail, this is pretty much one of my all-time favourite screwdriver toys. The meticulous attention paid to its overall design is just excellent. Turning to features, the screwdriver is activated by pressing the small button on the handle. As you can see, the emitter lights up a steady blue while a basic low buzzing sound effect is heard. Grabbing this brown handle on the hatch, it can be popped off revealing the neural relay bars. Now, while it is very small and inaccurate, it's still a nice inclusion all the same. Pressing down on this silver button below the relay for a few seconds will activate its light effects. They just pulse steadily for about 10 seconds before automatically switching off. And while they're lit, the emitter lights and sounds are completely disabled. Finally, quickly pressing the button will change the Sonic to its red setting, so pressing down on the main activation button results in this. The emitter now lights up red, and additionally the sound effect has changed to a slightly higher pitch. While we never did see this setting in the episodes featuring the Sonic, in fact it's only referenced in one throwaway line, it's still an awesome little bonus the character decided to include it. Battery installation is fairly easy, you twist the black end cap until this grey tab has moved from the left to the right, then pull it to slide it off, which will reveal the battery compartment panel. This can then be removed via a Phillips head screwdriver, allowing you to access the batteries themselves. Doing a size comparison, it's plain to see that River's Future Sonic is one of the smallest out of character's range, being only bigger than the Sonic screwdriver pen light which is included with Captain Jack's Vortex Manipulator. So overall, what do I think of this toy? 
Well, I love it, I love it, I love it! The Future Sonic Screwdriver features one of the most intricate and visually appealing designs I have ever seen. The oxidised copper effect, which has been replicated here using that green paint, just gives it so much character, while the dampers and ID ring add a spark of personality. I'm so happy that this Sonic has been re-released with all of its original features still intact, unlike the UK version which lacked the red setting and neural relay functions, which I think really gives the Sonic its extra kick. True, the neural relay bars are inaccurate and far too small, and I would really have loved for them to turn off one by one, or even include a sound effect, but at this point I'm willing to take anything. The ability to change the Sonic from red to blue settings is an inspired inclusion, but I don't like that the button to do this is located under this panel, which is meant to be hidden anyway, and I think this red section here would have been better suited as the button to change the Sonic's modes. But, of course, the few problems I do have with it come from my never-ending search for perfection, and I'm sure regular human beings will have no issue with its effects whatsoever. Additionally, I've been scarring this Sonic for any sign of legal kertwink, and you want to know where I find it? Mold it onto the battery compartment. The battery compartment that's hidden from view when the Sonic is fully constructed, so it doesn't detract from the Sonic's overall appearance? Good move, character. Good move. And so that brings us to the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to stay subscribed for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thanks again for watching and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye. Well, that went well. Son of a...